Cosmic Optics Tutorial. Alright, today guys, I'm going to teach you how to install a rear backup camera and screen in your vehicle. These are all the tools you're going to need, along with your connectors, to perform this. This is your rear backup camera going to be mounting to the license plate. And right here is your screen, all your cables and hookups, video cable. It's going to be your mounting uh, deck and your remote. Right here, we have your T-taps to tap into your factory wires and quick connectors to go into them. You got your uh, panel poppers for all panels to prevent you from breaking any uh, clips in the car. Uh, this is your J-hook tool. It's going to be for taking apart the dash or anything. And we have our wire crimpers, our speed strippers, which make it absolutely a must. Uh, channel locks is going to be used to close our T-taps. Screwdriver, you want to have your multiple bits and the multimeter. Today we're going to install our rear backup camera and screen on a 2005 Toyota Solar convertible. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and get into our access panel, which is easy. You just pop off this plate right here. And we're going to have, this is where all your lights are for the, uh, the camera that we're going to put in. Uh, we're going to go to our reverse lamp wire. So by doing this, you're going to actually need a buddy to get in the car and hold down the brake, put it in reverse while we're spiking the wires. Uh, it's gonna be a little easier than going up through the front because you only have a few here, so you're gonna have about four wires to test. So make it a lot easier on you, and we can run this, power our screen, and our camera. Okay, so now using our multimeter, we're gonna go ahead and set it to voltage DC. All right, we'll go ahead and get it set up, and we go ahead and ground out our multimeter. And now we're gonna go ahead and go inside that plug. All right, and now I'm gonna go ahead and have my buddy uh, turn the car on and place it in reverse. All right, so now we've got it. We've got our 12 volts right here. So on the Solar, it's gonna be this red wire with black stripe. So now we can go ahead and have him put it back in park. And we'll go ahead and put T-taps on this wire and proceed to the next step. So now we've gone ahead and located our reverse lamp wire, which is this red wire with a black stripe. So what we're going to do is go ahead and splice off of this. Uh, also, just a note, uh, you don't exactly always have to use the T-taps. Uh, today I have a splice connector, and I'm going to actually show you how to connect this. So give you a little bit of versatility and show you how to work with what you have. All right, we're gonna go ahead and unplug the wire from our light. And I'm gonna cut back the sheet so we can access our wire a little easier. Be careful when doing this. You don't wanna accidentally cut any of these wires, so. Once you have that, we'll go ahead and pull this back. <coughs> Now we have good access to our reverse lamp wire. All right, so what we're gonna do is, for this one, we're gonna go ahead and use our extension wire that we have, which is purchased separately. Um, you can use any standard uh, 16 to 18 gauge speaker wire. And for this aspect, we're not gonna have to strip the wire at all. So you're gonna have two colors. Uh, and just like I'll note in our instruction manual, always try to at least flag or note the color of the wire that you can use as the power. Uh, you don't want to get these mixed up. So here's our splice. So you have one end which has a stopper on it. That's what we're going to actually stick this wire into. Make sure you feed it all the way up to the end. And now what you're going to be able to do is slip it right over your reverse lamp wire. All right, now 
that's locked in. Now we're gonna go ahead and get this ready to close and using our channel locks, we're gonna go ahead and lock it down. Now these are a little bit finicky, so you gotta make sure you got everything in place before you crimp it down. Otherwise, you're gonna have to take it all off and start over again. One of the easier ways to do this, instead of closing and locking it, we'll go ahead and just squeeze our splice right down on it. Now your wires are already tapped into each other. Now we can go ahead and clamp this closed and lock it. Once it clicks, it's in. Now you're ready to keep uh, moving to the next step. So now what we're gonna do is you have your two wires for your speaker wire. We can actually go ahead and strip this off. Because uh, for this aspect, we don't want to use a ground that's gonna run you know, over 12 feet to the front for the camera. So on this car, we're gonna do two separate uh, grounds. One we'll do in the trunk for our actual backup camera. Uh, the second we're gonna do in the front quarter panel for our screen. So I went ahead and stripped this off because we're gonna use this reverse lamp wire uh, to tap onto, uh, to go ahead and put our plug for our uh, camera. Uh, what I want to do is leave a whole lot of access, uh, excess wire uh, for this. So, for this next step, I know this is only about three feet long right here. So, we're going to start taking apart the, uh, the cup holder back here and gain access. Uh, with this access, I'm going to show you how to run the wire without drilling through your car. Uh, in all cars with a trunk, you're gonna have a air access. This allows you to close the trunk. It releases the pressure. So we're gonna start off by taking apart the cup holder uh, using, for this car, a 10 millimeter uh, socket. Right underneath here is going to be your access to run this wire outside. Now this is the uh, vent release that I was talking about right here in all trunks of all vehicles. Uh, this is going to be good because you're not going to have to do any drilling at all. So now we're going to proceed to go ahead and run our reverse lamp wire down there and outside the vehicle. It just has some little rubber flaps you can just pick up We'll just start feeding this wire down. Okay, now that you've fed it about at least a foot or two, uh, we can go ahead and go on the underside and we'll pull the rest of the slack out. So now we've fed our wire through right under here. Uh, this is going to give you access to this bumper cap, which all we're going to have to do is run this wire up under here. And as you see, we're, we're going to have some tabs where this bumper clips on. And all we're going to have to do is zip tie it up and around. Uh, before we zip tie, we're going to go ahead and pull all the slack through. All right, now that that's done, we can go ahead and feed it up around here and then we'll zip tie it. This is gonna give us where our reverse lamp wire is gonna go over here. So now all we're gonna have to do, we'll go ahead and just pull the wire right over here, get some slack out of it. Now, we're gonna just still leave this loose. 
Uh, also with this, we are running the, this uh, outside of the vehicle, so we're gonna have to loom this wire to protect it. Um, once we've got it over here, you're gonna have to try to find some spots where we can zip tie it later to secure it. Uh, now all we're gonna have to do is go right up through here, and then you're gonna have access through the panel right behind where your license plate mounts. Now we're just gonna go ahead and pull the slack out right here. Same as we've done with the rest, feeding the wire through. Uh, leave just a little bit, because uh, on this car we're gonna wanna make sure we hit just around the bumper. You don't want this hanging underneath the car. Um, so we'll push it back, I'd say about a foot and a half. Uh, once we get about a foot and a half, we can go ahead and clip this wire off. Once we get this done, we're gonna go ahead and strip it off. Using our wire strippers. Now that we have this done, you can go ahead and take the end plug that plugs into the actual backup camera. We'll strip these off. And then we're gonna attach it with a wire boot together. So now we're gonna go ahead and attach our wire boot to both ends of our reverse lamp wire. Go ahead and crimp it down securely. Check your connection. Now we can go ahead and do the other side. All right, do the same thing. Hold the little snug, make sure we got a good secure connection. All right, now we're gonna have our ground right here. Uh, for the ground, we're gonna use just a little bit of an extension or I can just strip this bag and it looks like I'll be able to use this wire. Um, I'm gonna go up underneath. Uh, we're gonna have to watch out not to be the exact frame, which is extremely hard to drill into. Uh, so now, we'll go ahead and proceed to doing that. I'll go ahead and get a location for the ground. Um, I'd prefer to do it uh, inside the trunk uh, rather than keeping it outside where it's gonna get elements and it could rust the connection, give it a poor connection. Uh, what we can do is we can go up right along this side. Uh, you always want to avoid anywhere on the bottom of your vehicle of this trunk because uh, you have a gas tank under there, you don't want to pierce that. It'd be a serious problem, you'd have to have the tank replaced. So uh, to do this, what we're going to do is we can go right down here, right in this arch. We'll take a flathead screwdriver and the area we'd like to put it we're gonna go ahead and scratch the paint off. This is gonna give you a secure ground. All right, now that we've done that, we're gonna grab a self-tapping screw with an end. You can actually get this at your local auto parts store along with anything I show you in these videos. Uh, this video for uh, installing these backup cameras. Um, for that, we're gonna go ahead and get our wire. Uh, we're gonna feed it up through, make a little extension first, feed it up through. Uh, we'll put a ring terminal on it, and then we'll go ahead and screw it down. We'll go ahead and use the rust bar wire that we've trimmed off. We're gonna use this to make an extension for the ground. So we can go ahead and put the ring terminal on this one. Just simply go ahead and strip it back. And we'll add our ring terminal right onto that. Another note about uh, any ring terminal or ends you put on, you're gonna have open teeth. You always wanna make sure you put the nipple right down on top of it. Uh, if you do it the opposite way, it's not gonna hold your connection for long. All right, check it, that's secure. All right, now we can actually go ahead and ground this out. Uh, we're gonna use our T-tap and then we're gonna get our uh, a power drill. We're gonna drill it in. Okay, 
So for this one, we have a quarter inch hex head. So we're gonna use a quarter inch uh, socket right onto our uh, drill. We'll place it through our ring terminal. We're gonna go right on our spot where we scratch the paint off. Fairly simple. May take you a second. You may want to just bend the ring terminal a little bit. That way you'll be able to hold it a little easier. Okay, now we've got our ground secured right here. So now we can go ahead and feed the rest of our extension right through our vent port. Same way we did with the other one. Okay, now that we've done that, We'll go ahead and do the same thing. We're gonna pull it right around back up through our license plate uh, area. We're not gonna pull all the way through, but we're gonna go ahead and uh, get to that end. We'll attach that with another boot to our ground wire end. Now we're gonna go ahead and pull the slack out from under the bumper with our ground extension. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing. We'll run this up right underneath the vehicle and we'll attach it. Uh, I want to go ahead and pull out all the slack. You don't want to make a ground too, too long. Um, and it'll start losing its resistance. Now we have our ground extension that we've made uh, connected to the car. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and loop it right over this the tab that holds our bumper cap on. Pull it through, but not too tight. We'll leave a little bit of slack here. That way we can hide the wire and loom it. Um, now we're going to go ahead and attach it with our other end. So we'll just go ahead and clip the wire. I'm going to strip it back. Okay, now we're going to take our other end of our ground with the plug on it. And we're going to attach the boot to one side and then the other. And then we'll have our ground connection secure. Uh, always note when you're uh, installing any of these cameras, uh, you're going to want to do this ground first. You never want to connect the power wire without a ground. I will go ahead and fold this over and we'll slip it in. Now we have a secure connection going right up to our plug. Now what we can go ahead and do is, now that we have the power and ground for this, we'll go ahead and proceed to run this reverse lamp wire. Uh, we're gonna tap on to this one up in the trunk and we're gonna run it up front for the screen. Right. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead and gain access back here, uh, try to find a path where we can run our wires inside the vehicle. And use a flathead with these, gently twist it, you can get these pressure clips right out. And just go all along the trunk edge. Get these out. Alright, once we do this, we can just pull these right out 
Make sure you're keeping them together that you don't lose one. Now that we take all these out, we've got some access here to look right into our back. So you may have to pull this panel out of the way down here so you can drop it down a little easier. Okay. Now that we have that, we can see a pathway where we have our loomed wires right here uh, for the factory running through the vehicle. So now to go ahead and gain access to this panel, what we're gonna do is start taking apart our cup holder area. Uh, this is gonna be held in with clips and we can actually use the panel poppers to get this out a little bit easier. So we'll slip them right in. Just slowly unclip this. All right. Uh, also, underneath our cup holder, we're going to have a screw. Now that we've just unclipped this outside, we're going to go have to unscrew this to fully take this part out. So now we have a screw right down at the bottom of our cup holder. We'll go ahead and take this out. Now that we've done that, we should be able to easily pop our panel apart, just like that. Okay, now if you see right down here, there are the wires that we have coming from the trunk we were looking for. Uh, now that we've found this, we know we can go ahead and take apart the rest going up the front, and we'll feed our wires through. So we're okay, now that we've gone ahead and located our wires in our cup holder, we're going to go ahead and proceed taking apart our bottom trim piece with our panel pops. That way we can gain access to this panel. Uh, you always want to be really careful when popping these off. Okay, I actually popped one right out there. And just slowly work it up. Once you get that off, now you can have some clips along the inside chain. Uh, for that, you can actually use your hands very carefully. And now we've got our access to it. All right, now that we've got our trim piece off, we're gonna go ahead and take apart this kick panel right here. Uh, on this one, we do have a little plastic screw in the back. Uh, you can just access this with your fingers. Uh, it comes off very easily. Once you get that off, you'll have some clips right in here. All right. So now we're gonna go ahead and take apart our panel right underneath the steering wheel. This will gain us access to finish running our wire. Uh, for this install, we're gonna actually do it custom in our pocket. Uh, so we'll go ahead and show that here. And now we'll go ahead and pop this off with a flathead, gaining some access to our screw, which is right inside here. And once we've located that, we can grab our uh, power drill Right. Now that we have that backed out, we have our 10 millimeter. We're gonna go ahead and take this off. And once you get it loose enough, you can just finish the rest with your hands. Now we've got that out. Now we can go ahead and just slowly pop our dash apart. All right. And we can go ahead and hang this down. Now this shows you how we're gonna run this wire up and around right into our pocket, which is located right here. To give us a little bit of leeway to gain access to our socket, inside our pocket where we're going to install this. Uh, we go ahead and take this whole trim piece off. Uh, for this, I've already pulled up the uh, emergency brake, but you want to pull that up all the way. 
This you can do all with your hands. Very carefully. Just start popping it apart. Everything's gonna unclip. Then you'll be able to just tilt it. Go ahead and remove this panel. Um, this part right here with your pocket, now you can go ahead and get your fingers down on the sides and we'll just disassemble it like this. Um, for this, to pull the pocket out, we're gonna have to actually keep the emergency brake on, turn the car on, and we're gonna put our shifter all the way back into drive. So we'll turn it to on, and we're gonna go ahead and press in our brake Okay, we got that all the way back. Now we're gonna be really careful with this. And to do this, you may have to tilt it a little this way first. And go ahead and take this trim ring off. Now I'm able to unhook, and this is our, uh, heaters for the seats and we'll just press those in unplug them you have another access wire we'll unplug that now you may, we may have to go ahead and close this door a little bit so we can get it up and around all right now if you want to check you can see where our socket fits in right back here uh, we have some clips on it right on each side and unplugged it so that we can actually pull our pocket out. Okay, so I went ahead and I pushed on these little clips, uh, pushed this side in. It's gonna take a little bit of uh, pressure to get these clipped out, so. Push it in pretty firmly. It may take you a second to do this. Remember, don't overly force it. Uh, breaking it is gonna make it useless. We'll just have to replace it. There we go. Now we've got our socket out. All right, uh, now this is gonna show we don't need any drilling with this. Uh, we're just gonna run our wire uh, from our screen right through the back of here and up the front of the car. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount our screen inside our box using where we just took out the cigarette lighter adapter. So. I'm gonna go ahead and just feed this through to the other side. And since this is such an almost tight to perfect fit, we're just gonna put some double-sided tape on the back of here. That way, if you wanna take this out, we have no screw holes, anything. So uh, just go ahead and cut your uh, double-sided tape to the length of the screen. Or you can go ahead and go right here where it normally would mount. Place it over. Trim off your excess. Then you're gonna just peel the backing off. All right. And to do this, we're gonna have to slide it in at an angle to be able to fit it. Slowly slip it back in, and there it is. Flush mounted right in the back. So we're still gonna be able to use the door on this. And in other words, you can also, basically you're gonna be able to hide this whenever you park so people won't try to break in. All right, now we're done with that. We're gonna go ahead and install everything back together put all our panels back together and then feed our wire to our uh, quarter panel. Right, so now what I'm gonna do is, we got the back of our den plug that plugs into the back of the monitor. Uh, since we already had this taken apart, 
I'm gonna go ahead and feed this right behind here, up into the console, okay? Now we can go ahead and plug the monitor into it. All you have to do is match up little pins. It's only one way it's gonna to go together. Lock it in place. All right. And you can just pull a little bit of the slack back. All right. Now of course I'm gonna to have to grab the keys and do the same thing. I'm gonna put the uh, shifter back in the drive. Turn it to the on. Push the brake while our emergency brake is still up. And we'll go ahead and plug our components back in for the seat heaters. Get all the wires behind there so you don't pinch any. Alright, we'll slip the bottom first, line it up. And get everything clipped back into place. Right. Now we can go ahead and put it back in the park. So now what we're going to do is we're going to locate a 12-volt uh, switch wire. Um, this is going to be located, uh, all you got to do is follow where your steering uh, ignition column is. It's going to run right back and you'll see it's going to follow right back into this large white plug right here. And you're going to see probably about eight or nine wires. All right. To test this, we're going to use our multimeter. So now we're going to go ahead and find a 12-volt switched wire. Um, we're gonna use the, right off the ignition switch, right here, this white plug that you see that I'm pointing at. Uh, we're gonna go up in here and we'll test right inside the plug. So we won't actually have to spike the wires. We're just gonna go in each uh, plug that the wire plugs into. The way we do that is set your voltmeter on uh, DC voltage. And while uh, you can actually go ahead and, easiest way to find it is go ahead and turn it to accessory right now and the way we're going to check it is we should have 12 volts and we turn the key off we should get nothing all right so I'm going to go right up behind here and we'll plug right into here I'm getting 12 volts right now all right so now I'm going to go ahead and switch the ignition off since I'm doing this by myself, it's taking, you know, I'm gonna check it each time. So now we're at zero volts. So I know right now this black wire with the yellow stripe right in front is gonna be our 12 volt switch. So we can go ahead and pull the keys out and we're gonna go ahead and tap onto that wire. Uh, we're gonna go from that one to our red wire on the screen. We can go ahead and use our uh, tap connection to connect onto our ignition switch wire. It's gonna to go to this red wire off our screen. All right, so we'll pull this through so we can go ahead and slide it into the end that is closed off, uh, which you can see right here. Your right side is open, left side is closed. So we're gonna come from this end, feed it through until it stops. All right, slide it onto this wire. which takes a little second here. I'm trying to do this so that way you can still see what I'm doing. So now we're gonna take our channel locks. Okay, now we've got it clipped on. So our 12 volt switched is now connected right into our ignition. 
So now we're going to go ahead and feed our wire. We'll zip tie it up here and get everything in place. And then we can put this back together. Now, when we're wiring this, you're going to want to run it above where your hood latch is because you don't want anything to bind up with it. So, what we can do is we have a, uh, some duct for the heater. You can actually uh, zip tie it right alongside, up by our fuse panel, and back for the quarter panel. Here we go. Now we're going to go ahead and feed the wire up over the diagnostic plug. And right back where we have a bunch of relays and switches. And once we get this done, we can secure it back here. Right, just with some zip ties. And we'll screw it together. Right, now we just have a couple of screws. Just make sure not to over tighten to strip out the screws. Now that's put back in, in place. I'm gonna leave our quarter panel off. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and make our ground over here. We'll just strip this a little bit more. All right, add your ring terminal on there. down All right, nice and secure and this car actually had a ground but this is we're going to go actually to this plate anyway right here in the quarter panel um, go ahead and take my self tapping screw that we purchased at the auto parts store and and screw that in. All right, that's it. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is, to get our wires fed through with our reverse lamp wire um, and the video wire, it's been run those both at the same time. Uh, we'd already taken our cup holder off. Uh, now we're gonna have to take this panel off to be able to reach through the back trunk because this is a convertible so a lot of this stuff in the back uh you don't have a lot of play so we're just going to try to fire, follow that wiring harness so we'll go ahead and unscrew this see a shot we look right down here is we're gonna have to feed it through to the trunk all the way through the bottom right there so I'm just gonna have to follow that when we feed we're gonna feed these wires through the trunk uh, to do this one of these wires this is going to be what we hook to our reverse lamp wire, and then we're going to need to run our video wire. So to do this, we're going to go ahead and electrical tape it together. Make sure we do it good enough, because you don't want them to come apart. You want this to go in one smooth, uh, one smooth 
sweep and we push it through. Okay, now we're gonna take this and we're gonna go right up and right along these loomed wires, there's gonna be a pocket opening. We're just gonna push these wires right through and pull them on the other side. So all you're gonna have to do is push them through. You'll see them from the other side. We'll go around to the other side and we're gonna pull them through. So now we're gonna take the end of our RCA video wire and we'll be used for our reverse wire. Uh, we're gonna feed it right up through here along this wire loom. Uh, if you feed your hand and you get in the trunk through here, you can actually feel the opening. Uh, you're gonna push this wire as far through as you can. Uh, once you do that, we'll go around to the other side and we'll be able to find it and pull it back through. So now you can see where you notice the light coming through. Uh, that's where we pulled our wire through. So with that, we can just keep pulling it through and watch your slack in the back. You don't wanna pull this all the way through, then you're gonna have to just start over. So uh, once you get that done, uh, we'll go ahead and put all this back together and uh, but first we're going to get all our slack through first. So I'm going to have to check it on the other side and make sure I don't pull all the way through. Uh, got it hanging out of the back so I want to leave at least three feet hanging out of the trunk. So. Alright, that should be it. So now as you can see where you notice the light coming through, uh, that's where we pulled our wire through. So with that, we can just keep pulling it through and watch your slack in the back. You don't want to pull this all the way through, then you're going to have to just start over. So uh, once you get that done, uh, we'll go ahead and put all this back together. And uh, but first we're going to get all our slack through first. So I'm going to have to check it on the other side and make sure I don't pull all the way through. Uh, got it hanging out of the back, so I want to leave at least three feet hanging out of the trunk. So, okay, now that we've fed all our wires underneath and securely under below all the panel clips. Then all you have to do is just clip this, route them right under and you're done. Now all we have to do is tap on with our reverse wire. It's going to be the blue wire right here. Plug in our video. Zip tie all the extra, uh, extra excess that we have up here. And then we'll be ready to put on the backup camera and then start testing it. Okay. Uh, you just have to remember it's just like a puzzle. Uh, the way we take it apart, just in reverse, we're going to put it all back together. All right?
Now that we've fed our wire that goes to the front uh, to our screen for our reverse lamp wire, we have this one. Uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is trim off this excess slack. We'll go ahead and put our tap on. And we can tap onto this bar. We'll crimp it to cut this through. All right, lock it in place. And we'll go ahead and put our panel back on here. All right, now, now that we've got that done, we're not going to go ahead and put this stuff together yet. Uh, we're going to do, like I said before, we're going to wait until we test out the camera that we don't have to do any kind of adjustments or pull everything apart again. Now we're going to go ahead and mount our camera on our license plate bolts. Uh, before we bolt it down, we're going to go ahead and plug this in and we'll feed it through the other side. All right, you have a little notch out right here. That's what we're going to put our wire right there. And we're gonna undo our bolts and then go ahead and mount it right on there. I went ahead and just hand tightened them before. So it won't take much to undo these. And mount Now you have two screws right here. Um, what we're gonna have to do is, when you mount this, double check when you test the camera to make sure that you have it mounted right side up, all right? Uh, we just loosely mounted them. We're gonna do before we connect any of our, uh, zip tie any of our wires together, We'll plug our video together. All right, this is going to allow us to go ahead and test it. So before we go any further, everything's connected and ready to go. Now we're going to proceed to go ahead and testing out our rear backup camera. So you can go ahead and start your car. Now we're going to go ahead and put it in reverse, and this should engage the screen and your camera. All right, now this is going to give you your spectrum right here of how far you have to be. Um, right now we do have another vehicle right behind us, so it is giving us the warning to stop. So, uh, if we'd want to go ahead and set it, right now we're actually on a sloped uh, driveway. So it is tilted a little bit up, uh, but that is because my driveway tilts down, so that's why it's looking like that right now. So, everything looks good to go, so we can go ahead and put it all back together.